Hi again, I'm Patsy Thompson, and today we're going to learn a fun free motion edge finishing design that I call the EKG edge finishing design. Know that you can use this as a free motion quilting design, or you can use it as a free motion embroidery design, but today we're going to use it with free motion machine quilting. So, just what am I talking about? Here's a good example. The thread work you see here along the edges of these applique pieces is called the EKG edge finishing design. It looks kind of like an EKG rhythm strip and that's why I call it that. What's more important though is that it's a fun way to jazz up your applique pieces through thread work so we'll be adding highlights to our applique by using different colored threads. Now you'll want to give some real thought to which kind of threads you'll use when you do work like this in order to achieve a maximal effect. I stick with solid color rayon and solid colored trilobal polyester threads for this because they both have a wonderful sheen. Remember, even though you can't see it with the naked eye, trilobal polyester threads are triangular shaped so no matter how light strikes them, they will reflect light and throw off a wonderful sheen. We'll be starting with this piece, which will ultimately be the center of a wall hanging. Now these applique shapes have been fused on using Wonder Under, and because I want to emphasize them, I'm going to add a trapunto layer under all these applique shapes. Here, I'm placing a piece of scrap batting underneath, and I'm pinning it all around all four sides to hold it in place until it's been stitched down with our decorative stitching. Now you can use all different kinds of batting for this, but I'm deliberately using wool batting here because it will give me more loft or poofiness to the finished product. Once this trapunto batting layer has been pinned in place and the excess has been cut away, it's time to go to the sewing machine. Remember, this is just like free motion machine quilting, so my machine is set up in straight stitch free motion mode. To create this EKG design, I am stitching a series of V shapes that travel along the inside edge of an applique shape. Now there are a few guidelines to bear in mind as you work. First, work to keep the V shapes perpendicular to the edge of the applique. The design just won't look right if they get all slanty. Know that it may be easier for you to periodically pivot your piece as your work and you'll see me do this constantly as I'm stitching. Also, work to vary the lengths and widths of your V-shapes. Most are very short, some are medium in length, and a few are very long. Lastly, the length of any one V should never be more than half the width of whatever applique piece you're working in currently. You've probably noticed that as this tulip petal narrows, my V's become very tiny, and that is deliberate. I don't want to risk crossing over a V that might later be stitched on the opposite side. When you reach a new portion of your applique shape, View this as your opportunity to inject more color. That means switching to a new color of thread. I hope you're also noticing that I never match my thread to the underlying fabric as I'm making my thread choices. That's because this is decorative stitching and the whole point is to embellish this applique flower and we want our stitching to be seen. If you look at a before and after photo of a tulip, you can really begin to appreciate just how much thread work has added to this piece. It's almost as if we've added some colorful shadows or highlights, and we have, all through the use of different colors of thread. You know that expression, gray is the new black? Well, thread is the new fabric. Now this time, we're going to work on the swirly stem that holds these flowers. I want you to notice what a huge change our stitching will go through as we work our way along this stem. As we start out, we're in a very narrow stem right by the flowers. 
Here, it's a real challenge to stitch because the applique shape is so narrow. Don't let this kind of work throw you off. Just stitch short jiggles, kind of like you've had way too much coffee, and things will look just fine once you're done. As we work our way further down, the stem widens, and this is where we can lengthen some of our V's. Now don't get carried away, because remember, we don't want any of them more than half the width of the part of stem, the stem we're working in at any time, and we are going to have to stitch V's on the opposite side of the stem later on. Once we've turned the corner of the swirl, we simply work our way backwards, and now we're stitching our V's on the opposite side. As you work, you want to try to stagger the longer V's so they are not directly opposing one another from one side to the other. Once all the applique edges have been finished, it's time to cut away all the batting that falls outside those applique shapes. Now take your time doing this because the last thing you want to do is cut into that background fabric. I've done this so I know the pain. Notice also that I'm using a child's blunt tip pair of scissors for this. This is just my personal preference, but because that tip is blunt and large, it keeps me from getting into tight, tiny places where I'm more likely to accidentally cut into that background fabric. And that's how you do the EKG edge finishing design and add some really beautiful decorative thread work to your quilt all at the same time. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you to how to add some free motion machine embroidery to dress up this wall hanging even more. And remember, we haven't even finished piecing this quilt top yet, and we're doing all this work ahead of time. <music>